Hey, what's up guys? This is Ed, and I thought I'd come to you with a different video today. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you probably know that I'm really into my PC gaming from the 90s. Today, instead of talking about a particular game, I thought I'd show you some of the computer magazines which I've picked up over the past few months or so. In particular, in the 90s, there were two brands of magazine that really were probably my favourite to read, and I found a few copies here in Australia. Funnily enough, these are actually imported from the UK. Somebody down in Miranda, south of Sydney, must have really enjoyed these magazines and spent the money to pick them up. Now the two magazines I've got, first one is PC Gamer. You can see there it was being sold in Australia for $11.25. This is back in June 1994, where it was £3.95 in the UK. I've only got three of these. But what I also have is I have a pretty decent stack of PC Zone magazines. PC Zone here in Australia was selling for $10.50 but $2.99 in the UK. Although that was $2.99, uh, sorry, £2.99, but that would have been for the floppy disk version. I'll have a look in a minute and see how much the CD ROM version was. Now, what's really cool about picking up these old magazines is I'm sure that when I was growing up, I probably actually had some of these. Now, in one of my other videos, I've probably talked about how much I loved Alone in the Dark 3. It's actually fun to have an original copy of PC Gamer that has the Alone in the Dark 3 review in here. Now, the other thing that I love about these magazines is that compared to, compared to reading Retro Gamer and magazines that are coming out now, these really give you a view of what the... <laughs> what the hype was around these games back then, what it really was about. But it also gives you things like the original advertisements for hardware and software from back then. If you look at Retro Gamer magazine now, obviously the adverts are for newer games. But back then, you know, you'll have all these, uh, all these old adverts in here for mail order kind of games and hardware. It's fun to go back and see how much they used to cost even here, like the Gravis gamepad there and the original advertising for that. It's pretty fun to go through again. Even things like this where you have the, the charts where they used to tell you what was the most popular game of the time, what was selling out. So here in June 1994, top game, full price, was SimCity 2000, which they'd given a 94%, selling at £39.99. Going through the American top 10 was Ultima 8 was top there. Budget top 10 was The Secret of Monkey Island. It's also funny to go back and see what kind of things they were putting out as part of their uh, competitions. Here it was a Pioneer CD-ROM. You can take a look at that. This would have been back in the days when CD-ROM drives were only just really starting to pick up. Games were starting to come out on CD-ROMs. Uh, so these were the like, top pieces of hardware that were being sold at the time. They also used to have uh, walkthroughs of games as well in the back. Pretty funny. Gabriel Knight, look at that, Sins of the Fathers. One of my, also one of my favorite games. So I've got only three copies. So this one has got Theme Park in there is the main game that they're reviewing. I've also got this one from February 1995. It's all talking about Wing Commander 3, which is really cool to read. You can see there that this one used to come out with two floppy disks, Psycho Pinball and Cannon Fodder 2. I remember I used to love picking up these magazines so I'd try out all the demos. This one is from, this one's actually 1994 I think, can't see with the sticker, from May 1994. A lot of World War II stuff on there. The other thing is, from back then you can see how big Doom was because there's literally so many uh, articles always about it. This one's talking about how to network it, so how to uh, play deathmatch. PC Gamer though was quite um, straightforward. I, I liked it, but PC Zone really was the the one that was funny. It was a bit more edgy, and I just liked the way that they used to write their their articles. They're a bit more uh, probably teenager to young adult in, in the way that who they were targeting, um, and they used to just do a lot more cooler cooler kind of things. <laughs> saying like something is pants. In PC Zone in the early days, when there weren't too many games I guess, they used to actually have a full buying guide in the back where they pick out all the reviews that they have done for each month's article 
and actually placed it into the back of the magazine. So my PC Zone magazines, I don't have a full set. Um, I just picked up what the guy must have been selling or he must have had. So it goes from August 1995, issue 29. I've got maybe 10 or 15 of them. Goes all the way up to July 1997. So this is, that's really the perfect period for me on, on what I like to collect for anyway. So really going through here, you see sorts, sorts of games. Things that even, um, kind of remind me of what was happening in, in like a PlayStation and all sorts. So this is a advertisement for Pandemonium, which was out on the Saturn, I think at the time. And they, this is when Sega was just starting to put them out on PC. Again, you have all the um, mail order games and things here for sale. I remember I used to go through here and look at like all the joysticks and things like that. Um, never actually ever bought any games over these, never had the chance. Even adverts for uh, Terry Pratchett books. Yeah, I love going through these. Look at that. Advertisement for the these uh, old joysticks. So yeah, these are really cool. Look, you even have the, well, this article called Blueprint. So it's just like a preview of Broken Sword 2. I love that game. And you can see it's like real 90s, like the, the clothes that people are wearing, stuff like that. Advertising for creative sound blaster cards, PCI ones there. So in some of the earlier magazines, so this one's got construction derby. You don't even have hardware reviews in the back. Look, there's a review of the Gravis gamepad. Even talking about early P90 machines there. This is kind of the period where you're switching from nine, uh, 4x6s to Pentiums, starting to get 3D graphics cards, everyone was talking about graphics capability, and this is an advert for Screamer, I remember this is one of the games that was pushing on MMX processors, look at this, tech specs required, 8 megabytes memory, and a Ninja processor, which back then would have been like a 133 I guess and a massive 40 megabytes of hard disk space required. Anyway, yeah, just thought I'd show you something like this. Totally recommend if you do find old PC magazines from this, this era, really worth picking up because they're just awesome to read. I tend to take them on the, on the train with me when I'm on my way to work. Just fun to read through. Definitely recommend finding these magazines if you can. Um, I got these off of eBay. I'm always keeping an eye out just in case somebody else comes up with some others. Not sure how tricky they are to find. I think you can find some on the internet. Like you can find scans of these on archive.org and things like that. But you won't, it's not quite the same as having the real copy. Hope you found that interesting. And tell me if you read any particular PC gaming magazines when you were younger. Anyway, have a great weekend. See you next time. Look at that. The original blueprint, what they're calling previews for Tomb Raider before it came out on the PC. I guess even before it maybe came out on the PlayStation. You no, know, looking at magazines like that, back then you'd be looking at these graphics and thinking, oh my god. That looks amazing.